Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome to this Frame Quilting Friday video. I've been getting a lot of questions about how I use the quilt clips on my Grace Cunic machine when I get to the end of the quilt. So basically I have the backing fabric here penned to my leader and then I have my batting draped over, don't pin that to anything, and then I don't pin my quilt top to the last leader down here on the bottom. Uh, instead, throughout the quilt, I have used these quilt clips to just simply uh, lock it in place along the back bar. But as you can see, I've reached the point where now this is inside the frame, it can no longer be locked down. So what do you do? I've gotten this question so many times, so I figured I'd do a video specifically on this. And I'm continuing with the same design that I was using uh, in the last video, where I shared some, uh, just some gentle, curving echo ditching using the mini slide ruler. So what I'm going to do is show you basically how I quilt to the very edge of the quilt very carefully, kind of spreading and smoothing it out as I go, so that way I can quilt right to the edges. So let's get started. So I'm here on the edge of the quilt and I'm going to go on ahead and continue my design and I'm going to change it up just a little bit. I've been running with a very, very efficient pattern here and just bouncing across doing my curvy corner to corner echo ditching. What I want to do is I want to start stitching down to the edge of the quilt so I can start stabilizing that. So what I'm going to do is as I stitch across, I'm going to then stitch down. And remember, we want to always be estimating, especially when we're stitching on uh, to the edge of the quilt, we want to be a quarter inch from the edge when we hit any uh, stitching line, any ditch line. So there we go, in the right spot. Rotate that ruler around, and now guesstimate my space so I can stitch back up again. So, whoops. Remember, when you're ruler foot quilting, if you shift the ruler, <laughs> or if you stitch away from your ruler, you know, you really will get away from it. So there we go. I was just a little bit of an awkward angle, and that's why I made that mistake. No big deal though. I'm gonna come back this way now. Basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna focus on one square at a time, stabilize one square at a time. I think there's gonna be a way I can do this without having to stop and break thread and also be really nice and efficient, but also be stabilizing this edge all at the same time. So here we go. I'm aiming to hit a quarter inch from that corner. So that's where I'm gonna stop right there. And then again, shift the ruler around and I'm aiming to hit that same point over here. And you know, I had that little bit of a wobbly line. I'm not gonna stop and rip that out or do anything like that. As far as I'm concerned, that's not a bad enough mistake to really worry too much about. Okay, so you can see how holding the ruler against the quilt means that I was able to stitch that curve nice and smoothly. So I stabilized that and now I can stitch right along the edge and this is going to get covered up with binding whenever I go to bind my quilt. So I usually do a, quite a bit of travel stitching right on the edge of the quilt. Helps to stabilize that edge and then it also, I think it really helps to make things just kind of hold together better. Okay, so now I'm going to work my way further down. I'm basically just stitching an eighth of an inch from the edge, but you can see I'm also smoothing out the quilt with my hand as I work my way down. So that looks really good. I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to plan my path. I think I'm going to bounce up and then over and then in and then back down. And that's going to be pretty much my path the entire way through this quilt from here on out. So let's see if this is going to work okay. Actually, I want to go this way. First off, I need to get my foot so it's a quarter inch so that the edge of the foot is exactly on the edge of the quilt. That means that the needle is a quarter inch inside. So that's exactly where I want to start. And I'm going to go this direction because I made that mistake when I was trying to do this direction but holding it on the opposite side of the foot. So I want to avoid doing that. I know that's awkward for me. So if once you experience something and you're like, oh, that's awkward, that's not going to work, try to avoid doing that again. <laughs> so that way you don't make the same mistake twice. All right, here we go. So I'm in the right spot. I'm estimating my space over here, going corner to corner here. 
And then now I'll flip the ruler around. Remember with the mini slide ruler, we've got the same curve on both sides. So you can always just rotate it around. It makes it super convenient. Okay, now we'll stitch back down again. And this time I can have the ruler on this side. You know, it's just the difference of um, which side of the line that you're stitching, which side of the curve that you're needing to form. And just that one subtle change that I made there, stitching this line first versus this line meant that coming back down, that was a lot less awkward. So that's good. Now I just realized I missed a line. I need a little curve going here. So this is another thing to kind of keep in mind as you're quilting, always keep all of the lines that you're wanting to stitch in your head that that design needs to be consistent even to the edges. So there we go. I almost missed that one, but I remembered it in time. All right, and again, I'm stabilizing this edge. So I wanna smooth this down. I'm smoothing down the batting. I'm smoothing down the quilt top. Now I'll stitch on down, just like so. I'm making sure to keep that line of stitching, uh, you know, a little bit, I wanna keep it an eighth of an inch from the edge of the quilt. So that way it will be covered up in my binding. You know, you can push it a little bit, but I wouldn't be stitching a quarter inch from the edge because that might not be fully covered by your binding when you go to finish your quilt. Okay, so again, now this is pretty much gonna be a wash and repeat pretty much from here uh, because I've got a, a little system now established. I go on ahead and stitch up and knock out that curve. I go in and do my top curve. And the reason why I do my top curve first is because I find I just like that movement going up and out versus doing this curve first. You know, this is the lower curve. You really, I mean, you could do either of them in any order. This is the thing to keep in mind. You don't have to go uh, the way I'm doing it. You can always flip up the order that you're stitching these curves. But this is the thing, you really should be paying attention to what feels the most natural for you. Because I'm not kidding, having the ruler positioned and pushing the machine from one, from left to right will feel different from having the ruler you know, positioned like this with the curve going this way and pulling the ruler down. It just feels different. The alternative is to hold the ruler like that and that feels awkward to me. So it's definitely something to be thinking about. This is a little nuancey kind of thing, but you guys know I love nuances because that's really where it's at. You know, the devil's in the details. This is where it's at when it comes to really feeling comfortable with your machine, with the ruler in your hand, with the design that you're stitching. You gotta pay attention to every little thing and figure out what feels best for you and then make note of it. So that way you can repeat that over and over again as you quilt your quilt. So there we go, I got that last little curve. And again, it's not a big deal to do a little bit of extra stitching on that edge. That's a good thing, helps to stabilize the quilt. So this is how I manage that loose end of the quilt. I just work a little bit at a time. You know, if let's say I was stitching stippling or something like that, well, I would be locking that together with the design, you know, working in rows and I would be doing this. I would be coming down and securing that edge and working my way back up again. I think I'll try that for a future quilt, you know, to be able to show you how I would stitch stippling over the entire surface. But that is how I work all the way to an edge of a quilt, especially when I've used quilt clips. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about quilting right to the edges of your quilt and you're going to get on your long arm and give it a try. You know, there's lots of different methods here. You could pen, you could run along a basting line across the bottom of your quilt. Really, it's entirely up to you. Uh, you know, I just kind of feel my way through it. It really just depends on what I'm feeling like on that particular quilt. Uh, so this is not something that I'm super consistent with. I'll be honest, I kind of just go with whatever I'm feeling on any particular day and that's okay. You know, it's okay to just be making it up as you go along. Sometimes that's just the way it works best. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Come and check out the mini slide quilting ruler if you'd like to pick that up to use on your long arm at leahday.com slash mini slide. And of course you can find lots more Frame Quilting Friday videos at leahday.com slash frame. Until next time, let's go quilt.